Hello, and welcome to the Proto Art. In this video series, I'm going to introduce you to Diffusion B, a powerful tool for generating AI art. I'll guide you through the basics and help you get started. I'll briefly cover some common terminology and some of the updates that have occurred to this version and give you some bonus tips and tricks to use in your workflow. In this first episode, we'll dive into image to image and remake a logo with text elements. We'll start from something like this and end up with an image that looks something like this. We'll see how input image strength affects our images, what control net is, and the differences in the models. First, let's take a look at the interface and some of the changes that have happened. In the old version of Diffusion B, all of our tabs were located at the top. Text to image, image to image, in painting, out painting, control net, and our history. Diffusion B's UI home screen has been rebuilt from the ground up. All of our tabs are now located on the left. You can collapse this window for more space by pressing the button on the top left corner. You'll notice we have a few more options available too now. We have our standard text to image, our image to image, AI canvas, an upscaler soon to be released as an option to train your own model or models tab, our history tab, our settings, LoRa tools, an interpolator and deform video. That's right, video is now available in Diffusion B. In the top right corner, we have our drop-down menu again with the same settings we had in the previous version. Now to the left of that, it shows any images being generated, the time remaining, and more information. Let's take a quick look at text to image and see what's changed. Along with our menu now being on the left, we also have an option for advanced settings. So now we can adjust our resolution, which has increased. So now you can produce larger images. Our drop-down menu where you can access your custom models. The number of images has also increased, so now you can generate up to 2,000 images. Seed number, sampling steps, and now you'll notice we also have a drop-down menu for diffusion. This allows us to access our samplers, DDIM, LMSD, PNDM, K Euler, Ancestral, and K Euler, our step count, and you'll now notice we can actually see the numbers now on our guiding scale, as well as input images when we get to that tab. You can also now have a starting seed number and a modifying seed number. Under control knit, we now have another model available. We have depth, body pose, scribble, line art, and tile. You can automatically generate a control net image or choose not to if you want to use your own image. You can also control the strength of the control net input by changing this number value from zero to one. Under this drop down menu, we also have the option to toggle on and off if you need to use V prediction. As it states, if it should use V prediction, mostly used for stable diffusion 2.x, etc., etc. We have clip skip 2 you can also enable. And if you're not satisfied with any of these settings, you can also just press reset to the default setting state. Let's generate a couple images and we can see some of the biggest changes that have occurred. So I'll use this prompt, a manga illustration of a dog wearing a jacket. Digital art 2D by Yoji Shinkawa and art germ. I'll press generate. And you'll notice as this is generating, one of the biggest things that have changed now is you can add multiple prompts to your queue. So pressing add to queue will now give me the option to continuously add multiple prompt generations in the queue. Meaning I can choose different models, prompts, negative prompts and settings and have those all lined up ready to go. And if I go to the top right corner, you'll notice now in this window, it'll show me the ETA of the time remaining the amount of images that are still generating, the generation speed, and the overall status. As I also hover over the image, you'll see the prompt that was used. The UI interface is still subject to change, so there may be a few more things added when this is released. This is a major change that has come to Diffusion B, being able to add multiple things to your prompt and just wait for them to generate. And just like before, you can choose how many images you want to run. And as this is loading, you can always go to another tab create something brand new and add it to the queue. Just like previous, we can go to our history tab and look at what's been generated. We can see the seed number, steps used, guidance scale, the width, the height, the sampler, the model used, if control net was used or not, what mode it was using, text to image, image to image, etc. The strength of the control net importance if we use clip skip to or not. Now you'll notice if I hover over an image and I click on actions, I can choose to save the image, send it to image to image, send to an AI canvas, send to image with parameters, copy all the parameters, send to upscaler, 
or generate similar images. Let's press generate similar images. As you can see, it's generated similar images with the same seed number and settings that we used. If we go into history, you can now see our similar images that are generated. Now that we have an understanding of the basic updates to the look of Diffusion B, let's recreate that logo. First, we're gonna need to generate some images. So in our new prompt, we're gonna enter the following. Vector image of a DSLR camera, simple design, flat, strong outline. We're gonna clear out the seed number and we're still gonna keep the generated images around four. Sampling steps, we're gonna increase this to around 30. Sampler, I'm gonna leave at DDIM. The guidance scale, I'm gonna increase this to around 17. We can leave this small modification seed blank. We don't need to generate any control nets at this time and we can untoggle the clip skip too. Now that we have these basic settings in the prompt, we can also add to our negative prompt. In the negative prompt area, it's essentially what you don't want to see in your image. So we don't want to have blurry images, cropped images, or low quality images. So I'm going to add those into that negative prompt. And we're going to press generate. This may take a few attempts to get the results you want. So be patient. Now that we have the camera generated, let's also generate the background we can use. For this example, I'm going to use the prompt colorful smoke. Now we're going to press generate. With our images generated, now we're ready for the next step. Let's save these to somewhere we can find easily. So I'm gonna pick the best images I like from the bunch. Now that I have my favorite images chosen and saved to where I want, we can move on to the next step. But before we do that, let's edit them just a little bit. We're gonna do a few different things. We're gonna to convert to a grayscale. We're gonna layer them up in another free application and then bring it back into text to image in Diffusion B. We're gonna use a free web application called Photo P. Similar to Photoshop, it has pretty much the same functions, except it's free and it's web-based. Just like in Photoshop, we can create a new project, open from computer, or select from a template. You can open Photoshop files, Illustrator files, and a few different more file formats. Let's open our images from our computer. Now I have my images opened in Photo P. Now that I have my images opened in Photo P, we can edit from there. You can also use these other free web tools if you'd like remove.bg as in remove background, erase.bg as in erase background, those work pretty well at removing flat color backgrounds that are pretty distinctive. We can try this for this example, and they work pretty well at removing simple backgrounds from the focal point of the image. I'm gonna use erase.bg to remove the background. You upload your image, select the image that you generated and press open. It may take a second or two for it to upload the image. And you can see it did a pretty good job at removing the background. I'm gonna download this at its original size. Going back into Photo P, I'm gonna go to our smoke layer. I'm gonna keep this as is. However, I will make this desaturated. I'm gonna also import the brand new image that we just separated from the background. You can also remove the background within Photo P itself, either by using the eraser tool, using selection tools such as the magic wand, quick selection, object selection, erasing it that way, or creating a mask, or you can go under the selection tool and remove background. What this will do is create a mask and eliminate most of the background, although you may need to do a little bit of cleanup work. To do this, press B to select a brush, and either using the colors white or black, we could bring parts of our image back or hide them completely. Black will hide parts of our image. Pressing X can invert the colors, or you can use the arrows in the bottom here to switch between white and black, and that will bring back our original image. Take your time, make sure the image is how you like it. I'm gonna use the camera icon that was separated using remove background. So now I'm gonna drag that into our other smoke layer. So you can either drag, hold, and drop, or you can select all by pressing Command A to select all and copy. Go to your smoke layer and press Command V to paste. Or you can press Command A to select all, Command C to copy, and Command V to paste it into our smoke layer. So I like where this is roughly. However, we need to desaturate our background image. I'm gonna make our smoke layer desaturated and I'll show you why in the next step. We're gonna go to our background layer, go to image, adjust, and desaturate. 
I'm gonna make my camera layer visible again. I like how this looks so far. I'm gonna make my camera a little smaller though, using the arrow key and toggling the show transformation controls, I can grab the corners and make the camera a little smaller. Once I like the size, I'm gonna press the check arrow to commit to these changes. Now that I'm happy with this overall image that I created, let's export this out. So go to file, save as, and for this example, you can use a PNG or a JPEG, and I'll save this to my desktop as it's easy to find. Now that we have our image exported, we can close this browser. Now back in Diffusion B, we're gonna to go to the text to image tab. We're gonna enter a prompt. For this example, I'm gonna, again, use the prompt colorful smoke. Let's scroll down to control net. And now we're gonna import our image to be our guide. Click to add image input. Now the image that you just created should now be in this window for control net. Under control net model, we're gonna choose depth. Before we start, let me explain briefly what these models are and why they're important. Let's break down some of these terms in layman's. Depth maps. Imagine you're taking a photo, but instead of capturing colors, you're capturing distances. A depth map is a magical picture that tells you how far an object is in a scene. The brightest image, being the white color, will make an object closer to the camera. The darker image, being a black color, will make an object further away. Pose. Let's say you want to control a character. A character needs to know where it is and how it's oriented. That's what Pose is all about. It's super handy for stuff like making virtual characters mimic your movements and poses. There's various versions out there, Diffusion B has Pose. Scribble. Have you ever doodled or made a quick sketch? Well, imagine doing that on an image that gives hints to the computer about what you want it to do. It's a fun way for users to interact with image editing and even remaster old artwork. Check out my previous video on this subject. Line art turns your art into line art. Tile. Imagine you have a small image or texture that you're absolutely in love with and you want to use it to cover a whole wall or a floor without looking weird. Tiling is like magically multiplying that small image to create a seamless and repeating pattern that can cover a large area flawlessly. It can make things look incredibly detailed and realistic. Forgetting to add text that went back into Photo P and remember to add Diffusion B. So now that I have that corrected, I'm gonna load that into my control model on the bottom here. I'm gonna use the same prompt, colorful smoke. Now white being the brightest color should be closest to the camera and black being the darkest color should be further back. So let's try this out. Playing around with the guidance scale will affect our overall image. So looking at the history, you can see that our camera body is showing clearly. The text needs a little work, so it might take a few more iterations but you get the gist of how this can function and how you can create some really unique art using Diffusion B. The last step I would do is take this into Photo P, playing around with some dodging and burning to emphasize certain parts, maybe even adding text back in on top if I wanted to blend some different text and adding texturing. But anyway, hopefully this is entertaining and helpful for you guys. Stay tuned for the next episode.